everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We're excited to share some of our experiences with you today and our stories and hopefully some insights from like what we've seen ourselves in the industry. And yeah, so to get started, let's move on to what we have on the agenda for today. So we'll start just with a quick overview of who we are. Um, then we'll go on to the problem that we're facing that I'm sure a lot of you looking to get into the industry are familiar with, um, faced with massive job descriptions with unrealistic skill sets, like how do we how do we negotiate this? We'll then talk about the journeys that each one of us has taken ourselves. So all well, from different backgrounds, we've gone where we are in different ways. And so this isn't just, you know, a one size fits all. There are many ways to do it. And I hope that through sharing we'll be able to give you some insight to that. And then we are open to questions. We have some of our own that we will start with, but then any questions that you want to jump, drop in the chat, that would be, yeah, we'll get a conversation started around that. So. So starting with myself, my name is Anya Milenkovic. Uh, a cybersecurity analyst for MD Financial, and I focus on security operations, incident response, vulnerability assessment, and risk assessment. Perfect. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Dennis Chaup is here. Um, in a true consulting fashion, my title and who, who I work with is, is Depends. I'm a contractor at this point in time, and most of the areas that I'm focusing right now are on strategy and governance, vulnerability management, and security architecture. And my name is Christine Smiley. I am a security engineer at ClearBank. I joined as their first security hire. So I also oversee strategy and that's been my background today it has been security and startups um, strategy in high growth fintech. Okay, so moving on, what is the challenge that we're facing? So we all start on this path, those looking to enter the industry, the hunt begins and pretty quickly we see these job descriptions, entry level quote unquote jobs that require five to 10 years experience, in some cases more years of experience than years the technology even existed. And so faced with a list of unrealistic skills such as this, where do you even get started? Um, which leads to stage number two, which I believe Anya will take. So at this point, you may panic or just feel completely discouraged and maybe you rethink your efforts in cybersecurity or just pause indefinitely. On the other end of the spectrum, which would be bullet point number three, um, hiring managers. Let me just get that bullet point up. Yeah, Hiring managers themselves are very surprised that um, they're not able to find anyone for the job postings that they have and their recruitment team, their HR team is unable to find someone in the short amount of time that uh, they really need that talent. So at this point in time, this is exactly when, uh, I guess, a combination of both whoever is applying and the actual Harimani realized you know what, we are looking for a unicorn. We are looking for that one individual that has all these 20 things that we are looking for, but at the same time, we're looking for an entry job. So wh where, where, where does this actually take us? Uh, and how, and the whole, the whole goal with this specific discussion, with this specific session is like, try to answer the specific questions and also show how, how we have actually uh, have to adapt our experience in order to stand out. How can we, take what we have in step number one or bullet number one in this job description, if you may, and how we can put or showcase our current experience into that. And if we're not able to meet everything, because realistically we may not, then what can we do in order for the next time, which hopefully is in the near future, we are able to take into more of that specific content in order to be able uh, you know, to apply and ideally land a job, land an interview and take it from there, right? So what we are going to be talking in the, in the next next few minutes is how via sharing our specific journey, we have been able to transform ourselves into this unicorn, if you may, but at the same time, each one is different, right? So we're gonna go a, a little through this and, and please all questions as you are having them, just write them in the, in, in the chat so we'll address them as we go through. So, 
So the first unicorn, I um, had no technical background, no technical education, psychology degree, working in customer service part-time, obviously going through school. Then I went back to school to get my HR management certificate and started working in HR as a technical recruiter for about seven years. Um, then simultaneously, three different things happened. I uh, started going to a cybersecurity boot camp at the University of Toronto. I also was able to obtain an opportunity at the Bank of uh, the Royal Bank of Canada for identity and access management, which is one pillar of cybersecurity. And I started studying for the CISSP. After about two years in IAM, I moved into MD Financial as a cybersecurity analyst where I'm working now in incident response. And uh, most of this transition occurred through studying, uh, aiming for different certifications, applying for different jobs, interviewing consistently, and uh, networking throughout. Perfect, thank you, Anya. Um, in my case, my journey came more on the um, potentially more, more, more structured way in terms of like, started with, with information systems. I'm originally from Peru, um, right after finalizing um, university, uh, I, I got a job with, with Deloitte. At that point in time, actually, most of the things that I was doing was in IT audit. But I quickly noticed that this wasn't for me. That was not where my passion was. Uh, arguably, yes, it's one of the components of cyber, but I wanted to, to do a, li a little different. So um, that's where I, uh, I came to realize that potentially I needed to do something on my end. So I started uh, studying and I transitioned into a more technical role. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to call this my, my first unicorn morpho, if mor mor morphosis, if you may, right? Because I tried to do to focus on vulnerability management. And that's what I did in 2007. So I, I quickly tried to learn and try to embrace that specific knowledge and put it into practice. And actually in 2011, that's when actually um, got me into a job at Deloitte Canada. So it was a quote unquote easy transition. Um, at that point in time, I actually realized that my long-term goal was to be in a CISO position. So I was already having some experience on IT, audit, I was already having some experience on, on technical stuff, let's say in the vulnerability management, but I need to start working on, on the strategy in order to be able to see things, uh, you know, organization wise, wise enterprise wise, and not just on the uh, IT cyber part. So that's when I, I did a, a switch in, in, in my career, again, another morphosis in, into the unicorn piece uh, to start focusing on the strategy. I did some, some work with uh, PwC, I spent a couple of years at TD Bank, uh, came back uh, to the law in 2017 until actually recently, where now I noticed that I, I needed to focus a little more again on some technical skills. So that's why I've transitioned back to some of the architect type of type of role in order to complement my skills. But the whole idea is that I'm trying to show here what are the different adjustments that I had to do myself in order to stand out so I can be able to land the job that I wanted, even though some skills I didn't have at the moment where I decided this. Great. And then last but not least, so my story, likewise, I did not come from a technical background. So my degree is actually in philosophy and literature. And so going through that, like I was all in, I loved what I did. And so coming from Australia originally, a lot of the ideas which I was most fascinated for, fascinated by, were from Russia. And so at one point I packed my bags, went off to do a master's in Russia. And it was when I was there that I was exposed to things that I just hadn't seen before in Australia in terms of computer security and things like the evil twin attacks, um, various, you know, pop-ups from the FSB telling you to send them money from little kiosks in convenience stores and a whole bunch of bizarre things. But also a group of friends with a skill set that, I mean, previously I dabbled in IT. I'd played around a bit. I sort of helped out doing some IT as a teenager. But it was really only now that I started to push the boundaries of seeing like, well, I know little hacks I can do, but then friends would be like, oh, but then tack this onto that and you can achieve this. Um, but still, my main pursuit at that point was philosophy. I came to Canada for a PhD, but then very quickly realized that as much as I loved this, I didn't see a future in this. And then 
evaluating what else I could do. I want something which I was fascinated and captivated by that I could be all in with. And the only thing that captivated my imagination as much is what I sort of started building um, during my time there looking at IT security. And so I made the decision to get over into tech. Not the you know, most conventional, easiest transition to make when I knew that my resume didn't stand a chance. Um, you know, needed to, again, by an alternate means. So I started networking, started and apply also another thing is that the background I had and another thing a lot of you are probably facing who are transitioning in is keep in mind the skills that you've developed, which do apply. So for me, thoughts around you know, taking agency, making opportunities where none exist. Um, that was my entire story going to Russia as well. That wasn't something that was facilitated. I had to find what I want to do and make that happen with the resources I had available. So everything that I've used to date, I then applied networking, realizing that you need to present value to people rather than just asking for favors. So like going into an inter information interview, you don't say, oh, what can you do for me? It's like, well, this is what I'm capable of. This is what I can do for you. So my first stop was in consulting that then helped me acclimatize to the business mindset, um, how some of the skills I was aware of actually lined up with the corporate environment because like it's one thing to sit there at a computer and have an awareness of what you can do to a website it's like well how does this actually fit into some of the roles in the industry and so that was my first stop and so just on a contract basis and then at that point once again i was applying for full-time roles didn't hear back from any of the sort of conventional SOC one analyst positions i applied for but I caught the eye of a recruiter from Paytm and they called me up and said, oh, are you interested in the security engineering position? I thought, can I even be an engineer? But went along and they were looking for someone who, especially because of the nature of the company, a lot of fascinating things happening, but they look for resilience and resourcefulness. And I ticked those boxes because it was easy to find someone with a computer science degree but someone with that critical mindset who I remember during the interview process, just getting so excited about the technical challenge they gave me, and like nerding out about that. And they're like, wow, well, she's clearly excited. Like you know, that's what got me in the door there and continued on at that time. This is where I met Anya. I started doing instructing at the cybersecurity bootcamp of the, at U of T. And most recently I've now moved across to Clearbank where I'm, I'm leading the, the cybersecurity strategy. So that's, that's me. Perfect. So, um, what, what we want to do in this specific part and, and before I pass it back to, to Christine is we want to, to talk with you, right? Uh, and, and please you also talk with us uh, through, through the chat, uh, keeping in mind uh, a couple of things like Anya has spent uh, several time, uh, sorry, se several years as, as, a, as a recruiter. So she's been on, on both sides now of, of the table, right? Both applying and both hiring. Um, I, I have 15 years of experience when I most recently I've been like as people money or leading teams and such. And also Chris, Christine now in her, in her role, right? So please do um, with this and trying to uh, hopefully engage you to be able to answer the questions um, uh, and ask us whatever you, you would like to know on how you can stand out what what else do you, you you can you can do in order to make sure that you you know show showcase all your experience and all those uh what call it like uh, tips if you may so i guess we could start with the first question um and then the three of us will do our best to answer we'll, we'll answer through all of these and um, anyone wants to interject with their own questions, we'll jump right into that. But the first one is, are there specific things I should know about getting into security in North America? Um, should I take the charge? I guess the first um, thing I would recommend is take the time to really learn about the different types of job opportunities. It's a bit of a mess when you have hiring managers and other management teams that are posting job descriptions that have way too broad a lens into what the role is supposed to be. Um, when you have a better grasp of some of the specifics of the different types of roles, then you can narrow down on what are the minimum requirements 
of the job posting so that you know where you need to upskill, you know what you need to emphasize in your resume, and what you need to prep in terms of understanding the different types of questions that might come up in an interview and how you might be able to stand out. That would be my two cents. Yeah, and I'll jump in next and say, you know, it's incredibly important to network, um, but when you're reaching out on platforms such as LinkedIn, like, keep it short. You might have someone who's receiving 20 of these messages a day and would love to help, but if there's paragraphs and paragraphs of text and you're going into what you did in high school and university and every course you've ever done and why you think you might, it's like they're not going to make it through that much text. So especially like if you get an informational interview, if they agree to meet for coffee, then you can start even like, but you know, how was your weekend? Small chat, whatever. The first initial contact isn't the place for that. I'd say, you know, be friendly, introduce yourself, but it really shouldn't be more than a paragraph. Like keep it to the point. And I feel like I'm being from Australia, having spent time in UK, other places, there are other cultures that are a bit more chatty. My personal experience of North America is like that's not the case, at least not up front. So keep that in mind when networking, when cold contacting people. On, on the third question that we have is, um, what do you look when hiring? Um, I've been fortunate to be um, um, most recently able to look for different type of resources <clears throat> on the technical side and non-technical side. Uh, and yes, I'm, I'm guilty as charged also of on, you know, posting job description that literally are, are, are a, a page long, if, if not more. But now that I'm, I'm going back into like on the rationale for me to, to look for this, it's, it was like more like a wish list, right? It's like, these are all the things that I, that I would like um, to have. And in most cases, yes, I was able to put them in order of um, relevance, if you may, you know, at, at the top, what is the must have, if you may, and then towards the bottom, the good to have. So um, when going through a specific uh, part of the hiring process, as first when I was going through the specific resumes, I will be like, okay, let's let's see if the, the areas in the resumes are matching what I'm wishing for, if you may, right? And it doesn't need to be 100% in, in my case when I was looking for people, but it will be, okay, based on what I read, is do I believe it could it could work? It could you know uh, guide the specific you know transition into this role and such. And then when we're going to the specific interview, where I will where I was looking at, as Christine and Anya was saying, like it's like do I see some com compatibility? Do I see this individual uh, as being good as working in, in a team? Because in cyber in IT, everything is part of a team. There's no there's no silos anymore, right? Especially where everything needs to be integrated. So those are the kind of things that I will be looking at that point in time. And in my case, and maybe this is personal preference, um, attitude is something that actually stand, stand out a lot for me uh, because I prefer someone that can communicate and can I can do some of the technical st stuff you can teach. Uh, recognizing that sometimes I need a specific technical individuals for a specific, uh, um, you know, activities. So it, it's actually a combination of both, what I would say. Um, but these are these are the kind of things that on the side of the hiring, that's what I was looking and hopefully as I continue to progress my own career even, um, I try to, to showcase as I go through the different uh, jobs. So um, ha having said that, I don't know, um, uh, Christina, Anya, um, anything you, you can see on the on the potential chat? Nothing yet. Uh, I guess people are absorbing all the information. I, I would add to your point, um, for any hiring managers that might be reviewing this or someone who has contacts who are hiring managers, what I always recommended and what helped a lot in the recruitment process was defining what are the mandatory minimum criteria for the role to make sure this new employee is successful within the first two months of work. That helped narrow down the laundry list, the wish list of um, everything that they could possibly want. Um, and I would insist that it would be technology agnostic as best as possible. Mm -hmm. Obviously someone who has the exact experience and the exact technical environment with those tools would be perfect. But let's say you just want the bare minimum that would make someone successful. That also helps in communicating to the public 
future talent, what it is that you really prioritize for your team, what it is that um, would make them feel successful in, in, if they took on the role. And um, it really helped just clear up the amount of applicants that we got to a position and uh, much better conversations with the candidates and um, with the hiring managers themselves. Uh, I feel like uh, writing job descriptions is its own skill set, uh, something that um, is just as complex as writing your own resume. And um, definitely there's room for improvement across every industry to really think about what am I saying with this job description? Who am I trying to identify? And um, yeah, so that'd be my, my, my contribution to that portion of the question. Um, Christine, you've been participating in hiring. What do you think? Sure. And I think, I guess my message is as much for the candidates as for hiring managers. And I'll also just mention, so anyone who wants to drop questions in the chat, like I know I could actually sit here and ask infinite amounts of questions to both Anya and Dennis, because um, I'm incredibly curious about you know, the consulting side. And Anya, with her years of experience as a recruiter, like a wealth of knowledge. So take advantage of that. Um, any questions you want to drop in there? No questions too basic. Just go for it. But so when, what do I look for when hiring? So for me, I guess I'll target this first towards candidates that when you do have plenty of candidates who have the computer science degree, you know, you start the interview telling a bit about yourself and they start reading their syllabus from the last course they took. It's like the thing I'm looking for is to get a sense of the person, what motivates them. Can I connect with this person? Um, and so to, if you can express a bit of yourself, like I know it's, it's conventional advice at this point, but I'm really looking to get a feel. Um, and when you're looking for roles, there will be different people for different roles. Like, as I said, I don't think I would have been a great SOC analyst. Um, I like, like, I love connecting the dots a bit less than making them or you know, analyzing them. So you will find the right spot. One door closes, another door opens. Just keep on finding somewhere. Like if someone wants to work with you, you don't want to work in a team where they don't want to work with you. So I look for resonance. If I can get a feel for the person, that's it. But also for hiring managers to move over to that side. I'd say no. Like, are you looking for someone who's diligent, conscientious, detail orientated to sift through logs and find that? Um, anomalies or do you need someone who moves fast is creative comes up with ideas maybe not all of them will work but can sort of generate POCs which can be evaluated and add to added to your security program like there's a whole range of different personalities and to get a sense like the different profile of those different people is going to be like, you're looking at radically different backgrounds there so there's a fair bit of, fair bit of um, information dump, but yeah, that's how I addressed that last question. Yeah, what, what I would also uh, say is um, most of us potentially will have, you know, like a standard resume uh, where, we, uh, where we try to highlight our entire experience, right? But as different jobs you will be running into, they are looking for a specific uh, or particular set of, of skills or knowledge if you may, right? So while we believe, oh yes, I'm covering that in my resume in section three, uh, disregard that thought, meaning build a new resume and adjust that resume in order for the, the main areas that that job description is looking for, at least you are showing them at the top, if you may, right? So that way, uh, me as a hiring manager, I will not be, or ideally, I, I'll, I'll be a little more uh, subject to be like, oh, I'm reading I'm comparing like perfect this may be a fit rather than just looking at the first five steps sorry five bullet points and select this is not a fit and potentially move on and potential a uh, good resource right so to the best of, of your of, of your chances uh, make those adjustments make you highlight that experience, a specific experience and in some cases where some organizations are asking for a specific knowledge on a particular tool but you have worked on a similar tool somewhere else 
you can also explain how you can leverage that knowledge in order to put into practice into that, right? In the end, let's say we are using Curator or Splunk, whatever it could be, you can leverage that specific knowledge in, in the potential uh, job hunting. So those are the, those are the things that you, you may want to consider for that. And if you are considering on, on how to start your specific career, on which certifications you may want to go through, you, you have that option also to go for the technical specific certifications, product specific, you name it, your GCPs, uh, Amazon, uh, or, or Azure, or you can have your general training uh, that are more like a um, cloud in, in general, right? So there, there are both sides of, of, the, of the coin in this specific case. It's more like, where do you guys want to take your career to your next level? How do you want to stand out? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, maybe I'll jump in there with the questions since I don't see any, but so I've been on internal security teams so far, well, aside from teaching and a little bit of consulting, but the consulting world really intrigues me. So Dens, how do you see people who might be, I know we have perhaps more weighted towards introverts in that field, you know, we like computers. How do you see someone building up the consulting skills, which are sort of traditionally more extroverted? Like how can people grow in, in that capacity? In that capacity, most likely, I know it sounds cheesy, but you will have to be comfortable with being put in the spot, right? Especially in the in the true consulting fashion, where you need to figure out some answers as you as, you're, uh, as you speak and all that. You will need to be you will need to be comfortable on that end. Having said that, you need to have definitely your specific knowledge, whether that's technical or business in the specific areas that you're discussing. You will need to have it clear as well. And it doesn't come naturally. Like uh, in my case, I was uh, I, and I still do believe like uh, I was uh, very shy at, at first when I first started in consulting, and through being actually thrown to the pool and learning how to swim while drowning in the pool. I had to become comfortable with it. And, and I believe that's what has shaped me, not only work-wise, but also, to be honest, on my personal uh, life. So um, you you will need to develop uh, so, so things, so, so many things. Um, if you are an, um, you know someone that is open to, to talking, generally speaking, but you don't have the technical background, then you are gonna come out immediately as someone that is just chatty without so much base in the, in the back. So you need to find that, that point where you actually have those ones joining, I'll say. Very cool. Yeah. And I have a question for Christine, since questions coming from our introverted uh, <laughs> participants. <laughs> I was wondering, uh, your background in philosophy somehow converted into um, security engineer role. How did you manage, well, first the decision to go there and um, to actually train up and upskill for that role? Sure. So I think, so the two points, the, what sort of applied or like how I was able to recycle my background um, as I interpreted the first part of the question. I think the entire time I did, I was training my mind to see patterns and correlations and understand how, like in my role currently, it's understanding how systems integrate. So of course in a security program, so you're going to want to have your vulnerability management, you have the uh, static code and dynamic code analysis that you need to do if you're making software, you need to have pen testing. Like there's a whole series of parts in a program that you then want to see work together to form, I mean, it will never be 100% comprehensive, but that sort of analytical mindset when it comes to connecting dots is something that I used to do. Like my job was to read um, philosophy and pick up on the theories from there and then read works of literature and see how like a work of literature would illuminate a concept and so it's always like drawing these connections which gave me my biggest strength which like basically well my field was phenomenology which is the study of you know, mental models and so you come to understand that regardless of what field you choose so that could be coming in security, that could be leaving security and going somewhere else. It's being able to apply the skill set that you've had previously in a new role. And so it was sort of a little bit meta. It was the study of that that then helped me enable to do that and know that in my own thinking, well, things have to change. If I was going to go from philosophy to the corporate world, there are different priorities. Like you're not pursuing um, absolute truth. 
rather than you need to ask, okay, what's my purpose? Yeah. Sorry, Christine, to, to interrupt, but we may be kicked out oh. because it's 12.30. So in that case, yes, thank you for everyone. Because okay. um, I, I saw in a couple of sessions before that. Perfect. Well, no, thank you for stopping me. Uh, one, hang on, there's one question. If there's one bit of advice you would go back and give the newly hired you, what would it be? Uh, understand how much you will unfortunately have to do yourself. I sort of thought that maybe, oh, I'll be given like a lot of guidance and sometimes you are, but sometimes you're not. Like, Know what you need, be resourceful and seek it out yourself. Like you're not going to be told what to do. Or if you don't need to be told what to do, that's going to be incredibly empowering to you. So <laughs> I think that was the only question we got. Yeah, I mean, we're, 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 gonna we're like messaging quickly. <laughs> yeah. So thank you everyone for, for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.